Hi everybody, welcome back to another installment of Witches React. Uh, today we're, we're going to be talking about uh, the series Magicians on the Sci-Fi Channel, uh, based on the books by Lev Grossman. Um, been practicing your magical hand gestures over there. Um, all those fancy hand gestures they do on the series comes from ninjutsu. It's called finger weaving. Some people say it goes back to Japan, some people say it goes back to India. It is a real thing that spiritual people do to sort of align their chakras. Unlike the show, <laughs> magic's not going to be instantaneous when you do it, but we love it when writers base magical stories on real magic, and that's what this writer did. Um, so yeah, the, the finger weaving, the thing about uh, paganism and Wicca and witchcraft is like the pentagram is our main symbol and it has five points and each point has an uh, element in the direction north south east west earth air fire water spirit and so it's the same thing with your hand like there's five points on the star each finger has a different element assigned to it different traditions earth of paganism assign different yeah. points of the pentagram different elements different traditions of you know finger weaving have assigned different you know elements to the fingers but if you like you have to decide what works for you which finger is associated with each element um, for example, if you're doing like a well spell, you might want to use the finger uh, for finger weaving primarily that's associated with Earth. Well, the cool thing about the magical system in The Magicians is that it's, uh, it's depicted as taking a lot of discipline and a lot of practice. Your course load will double. Astronomy, botany, just to name a few. Study groups are mandatory. I'm sick of every single story about witches having the witch come. Our ancestors are from Salem witch trials and she's a, you know, hereditary witch and it just comes to her naturally. It's like it's been done over and over and over again. And, and that portrayal of witchcraft has, has had a real detrimental effect, I think, on our religion because people get into it thinking, oh, I'm going to, you know, uh, do this recipe and then get this get these herbs and these crystals and do these things and things will just happen It's like no, it actually takes a lot of discipline and meditation and you've got to cleanse yourself and, and focus on your intent Yeah, and uh, focus on yourself and uh, and perfecting yourself as well in order It's a to, craft. It's a, it's a skill that has to be developed over time so Exactly yeah. and little, people think magic. Oh, it's magic. It just happens like that so shows like this that depict magic as a discipline and as something you have to work for, uh, I think is a really good thing. It's very much it's very much a real fantasy fan's fantasy yeah. is what it is. You yeah. know. You say the writer wrote it as a reaction against Harry Potter. All the... fantasy, Harry Potter, Narnia, Lord of the Rings, every bit of it starts out in the wizarding school, but then Quentin finds a door to another world, and we bring in this other world called Fillory, and that's your Narnia spoof. He, uh, his thesis with this series, as near as I can tell, is that uh, escapist fantasy does more harm than good. You know, if you it, it, it teach your kids to expect the world to be all, you know, magical and here are the good guys and here are the bad guys and everything works out okay in the end, you're messing them up. Some dumbass kids book? Where do you have all that nerd boy dragon porn shit anyway? Are you 12? <laughs> so this is really fantasy satire. It's a satire on the whole fantasy genre. Well, sometimes uh, a school for wizards can be even more excruciatingly boring than regular school. Uh, <laughs> because what you're learning is so esoteric and abstract and takes so much more discipline. Um, but yeah, and, and um, you know, the whole point, there's a line in the, the first season about not everything can be solved with magic. The spell, or, you know, the whole point, that there isn't one. Not to get out of the room, not to keep the door locked. Nada. Cute, Pete. Oh, and scissors make a shitty screwdriver, by the way. Now you get why it was so important. Uh, to almost die for no reason? To figure out that not everything gets solved by magic. And, you know, Quentin is miserable before he gets there, and then he finds out magic is real and is happy for a little while, but then he still goes back to being his depressed self because he has to get over his own depression. But I, I thought it was like a reaction to Harry Potter because instead of, like, when Harry Potter 
arrives at the magical school and he's the chosen one. Everyone yeah. wants to know him. You know, when Quentin arrives, nobody cares about he's him. He's the opposite of the chosen one. Yeah. He's the schlub that nobody cares about. Quentin Coldwater? Uh-huh. I'm Elliot. You're late. This is him. Mm hmm. Hmm. He's not that cute. <laughs> and the most talented one is the girl, Alice. Yeah, Alice yeah. is, you know, like the shining, the shining star of the school. Jesus, Alice is going full Harry Potter Part Seven slash Eight over there. Show his great female characters. Oh yeah, they're they're more admirable than the male characters, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's find your dragons, and I. Nice dream, loser. I mean, I know who I was. Alice Quinn. I was the best at something. At magic. But then magic took over and I lost Alice. And by the time I got her back, I lost magic. Okay, so how can I help? You know, these are well-developed female characters. If you have two characters, two female characters in a scene talking and they're not talking about a guy. That's called the Bechdel test. <laughs> uh, the feminist Diane Bechdel said just what you said. Oh, hey, look, I respect the shit out of you both, and, and you, your, your leaders, and your people, and I'm a feminist. If you would just shut up for two seconds, the sex dream would pass the Bechdel test, Quentin. God. Yeah, the women are fully developed and have their own uh, agendas and everything. Uh, the, the female characters are interesting, they're well-written, they're, you know, multi-layered, you know, so it's got feminist themes in it, but it's like natural feminist themes. If you want to tell a feminist story, have a character female character you know well written overcoming the trials and tribulations having her confidence growing and have it be truthful and realistic that's how you do it you don't force these bullshit plot lines <laughs> down our throat charmed reboot charm reboot yeah. so it the show is so weird because they've done like musical numbers In the end with you, my I'm confused. It's a duel not today. It's a metaphor. I love that show. You know it? Morden School on Earth. I play Javert. Typecasting. And it's hilariously funny, but then it gets so incredibly dark. Yeah, there is, um, uh, again, spoiler warning, horrific rape scene. <laughs> Don't you fucking touch her! When you address me! Don't you fucking touch her. All right, I'll take you first. I chose you, Julia. It actually yeah. made me like physically sick to my stomach. And I, I have so many, I have so many problems with the way rape is de depicted in 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 science fiction and fantasy books. There was two books that I read. One was The Live Ship Traders, and the other one I don't remember. Oh, nineties. There was a ton of them. That oh yeah. Had, uh, rape in it. Yeah. What they do is like they just a big thing they in put 90s, it in. Fantasy. They put it in three quarters of the way through the story. Melanie Ron's uh, Dragon Prince. Yes. That's what it was. They put it in yeah. three quarters of the way through the story just to make the the antagonist really really bad. But then afterwards. Like the protagonist has like just, maybe uh, one scene off. when they yeah. talk about it and then it's never mentioned again and that, that just it yeah. pisses me off so much. How you do not make a character go through a sexual assault unless yeah. that's going to be part of the character's development that for the rest of the That becomes their conflict. Yeah, yeah I mean exactly. that is the, one of the worst things that could happen to anybody and is the most disgusting things about planet Earth in my opinion. So you yeah. don't put it in just to make the antagonist look bad. You don't put it in unless this is going to severely affect the character, because that's the only way to depict the yeah. effects of sexual assault accurately. He raped me. Your son. I'd be sobbing and telling you every detail. But I lost my shade in the abortion, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. I lost my friends. I lost everything. He turned me into a monster. You're a survivor. 
And Julia is raped, and then, you know, yeah. two seasons later, you still see her fighting of with the trauma of it. That's going to be her recovery from then on, yeah. yeah. But maybe Lev Grossman also read those 1990s fantasy novels and saw crap like that and was like, no. It's <laughs> the so second magician's book. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to write something accurate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I've never seen a show that's able to balance like the most horrific scenes with the most like lighthearted and funny scenes. Because they're always honest. Got some life and death stakes of our own over here. Yes, we're all fucked in our own way, like always. But if we do not do this, then the quest is done. But just go with me. You're going to hear music, and I'm going to make sure that everyone knows the words, but every single one of us has to sing. God, I hate you. It's, it's, well, you know, what you can learn about the, from this show um, as, as a writer, I think, is that you can, you can take the show anywhere that it wants to go, anywhere that you want it to go, even, as long as it's from a place of honesty, as long as the characters are still true to themselves. Pressure! Pushing down on me, pressing down on you, no man is for. Under pressure, that burns a building down, splits a family in two, puts people on streets. It's even when they're in this goofy musical, everybody's kind of like, oh, this is something we have to do, okay, yeah. you know, and, the, and you can see their real real reactions to being in this situation. And screaming, let me out! Pray tomorrow, takes me higher. People on, people, people on. It's very hard um, to write characters doing believable things in these circumstances that are completely unrealistic to anything we know on planet Earth. <laughs> At no point in The Magicians is there a Mad Queen moment where just somebody <laughs> does something that makes absolutely no sense. So in this yeah. completely, you know, fantastical world of fantasy, um, the characters still manage to be realistic, honest, you know, and that's very, very hard to write. So, you know, yeah. good job, well, Magicians writers. Yeah, it's essentially a character-driven plotline. Fantasy and sci-fi tends to be very concept-driven. This one proves that you can have a, a fantasy that's character-driven and just let the fantasy elements emerge and grow around it, and it actually becomes a more unpredictable and interesting plotline because you do that. Can work and love dares you to care for the people watching thanks for watching everybody enjoy magicians if you get a chance i guess next time we're gonna do um i think i want to do practical magic i think i want to do the story about witchcraft and witches that inspired my entire business so there you we're go. gonna do that one next Thank you. all right uh, blessed be blessed be